Hello everybody, welcome back to Various Oddities Showcase. It's a bit, it's a little bit of a short one today, but uh, we've got some fairly interesting news. Uh, so, there are a number of bug fixes coming up. I'm actually going to be releasing Various Oddities 5.2, probably the same day that you're seeing this. Uh, but there, but it's, it's most because there was a few bugs that weren't reported at the time that 5.1 was developed. So, we want to get those out and make sure things are as locked down and steady as we possibly can to make sure that people aren't going to be crashing or having other problems, that kind of thing. So, uh, one bug that we fixed is due to rotating blocks. Uh, I had a couple reports related to lanterns, which are one of our rotated blocks, and their metadata wasn't quite lining up properly. So, when people, when, when other mods especially tried to reference them, it was causing a crash. So that's been fixed, tentatively. There's only so much I can put in to like protect you from other mods, more or less. But uh, that has been fixed. Uh, there was another one which was a potential crash relating to uh, group size values in spawn settings, resulting in basically a zero size group, which is impossible. So that has now been fixed. It will still, in the config settings, allow a value lower than zero, but in the actual code it will manually, like, hard code it to be at least one. So, if you don't want to see a mob, just turn it off in the spawn settings. Don't just try and set the group saying to zero, okay? Other than that, we've also fixed the recipe for the diamond holy symbol, which was previously in, except that it was returning an iron holy symbol instead of a diamond holy symbol, and now it's actually there. And we've also fixed the hardness and blast resistance of wooden pillars. Uh, stone pillars were fine, but uh, wooden pillars were indestructible in the same fashion as force pillars. This is because they were extending off of the same class, and now we actually just have a generic pillar class that everything, including the force pillars, is coming off of. Other than that, we do have some changes that make this version worth updating to. So, we have added full rotation to our pillars. So here I have a nice oak pillar, and I can see there it goes sideways, and it goes the other direction, and it goes up, and it will go all six directions, and all six directions are actually meaningful, because uh, the texture will flip in opposing directions. So, for instance, if I go there, and I go here, we can see that we have this seam down the middle, whereas if I get rid of that, and I do that, no seam. So there, there is significance to that. Uh, otherwise, they would be very similar to just wooden logs, so I figured you could use that to apply some nice little detail and such in some contexts. Uh, we have also added a few more pillars. So we have the stone one as a base. We also have the granite, diorite, and andesite pillars now, completing our wide selection, suffice it to say. You may get some problems importing an old world that's already using pillars, but since there wasn't a crafting recipe for these before, uh, yet shouldn't be a problem. It's because this used all of these wooden pillars used to be one particular item with metadata, whereas now they have to all be actual individual blocks. So just bear that in mind. Uh, but as I say, because there wasn't a crafting recipe for them, I don't expect that to be a very great number of things. There is, however, now actually a crafting recipe. So if we look for our pillars, here we can see they're all sharing an entry, so you can now actually find all of them just from one of them. It's very, very neat. So uh, we have cleaned up and grouped a number of recipes in the recipe book, which is more just for ease of use and reference and such. Uh, and you can see these are relatively simple recipes. You are free, of course, to change them with things like Craft Tweaker. Uh, other than that, there is only really one more thing that we have done, and that is to add uh, stalactites to the game. So, we had our stone pillars, and we added the andesite, diorite, and whatnot as well, and now we actually have them spawning in the world. Now, much like their base blocks, these will convert into cobblestone as well as granite and all sorts, depending on what they're uh, actually made of. So if I was to break these without silk touch, I would just get a lump of cobblestone. And these will spawn in the overworld, in caves, underground, just to give them a bit of class, a little bit of detail and variety. So uh, much like up here, we can see that they do spawn on the top as well as the bottom, so stalactites and stalagmites. And especially combined with the moss, I think it looks really nice. And if we just get rid of my effects, so effects, that be clear. There we go. Uh, just adds a very nice little bit of ambiance there that I really like. I'm not trying to add a whole ton to caves, just enough to make them uh, look a little bit more diverse and a bit more interesting, and I think this really helps. So yeah, don't expect to see these everywhere, but they do appear in uh, varieties and numbers and such across the overworld. Other than that, that's all we have for today, so I hope you've all enjoyed. I've been Steve the Semi-Transparent Floating Head, and I'll catch you all as ever.
next time. Why did I try and swing my fist? I don't have a fist. I'll, I'll catch you all next time. <laughs>